Yes, Congresswoman, um, thank you for coming on. I really right. am glad that you decided to come and talk to us. Um, I feel like you're the boogie woman of the right <laughs> and I'm the boogie woman of the left, so it's interesting to be <laughs> talking to you because what you're proposing and what Bernie Sanders pro is proposing, you said that Fox was like ushering in the apocalypse with both of you, but to conservatives like me who mm -hmm. think that big government is very, very dangerous, it is like the apocalypse. And it's not just that Bernie is asking a lot of voters to buy into what I consider radical ideas like free public <coughs> college, the Green New Deal, Medicare for all. He's advocating for a complete paradigm shift of the American system as we know it. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge ask for people like me, and it's a huge ask for a lot of people, this seismic shift from capitalism to socialism. And actually, a Gallup poll showed that a majority of Americans would not vote for a socialist, around 45% um, wouldn't consider it. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that? It's not just yeah. that it's a political, you know, I think there's a lot of <coughs> Republicans would be more comfortable with a Biden or with sure. a more moderate. What do you say to someone like Well, me? one is, you know, when you, when you pull these abstract ideas, it's one thing, but the majority of Americans would vote for Bernie Sanders. And that's because of his record, because of his commitment and his policies. Um, but also, I think, you know, I was, I think there's one story that's not really being told here is what's actually happening on the ground in America. Um, do you know how many, what percent of American workers make less than $40,000 a year? Mm -hmm. Almost 60%. Mm. 60% of Americans You can't are, live on that in New York. You can't live no on that way. in New York, and you can barely live on that anywhere. You can't you live, live on, on that, that if you Yuma. have kids. No. And, um, and I think that that reality, personally, does require a paradigm shift. Um, this isn't working for us. And a $2.1 trillion tax cut, which has been deemed capitalism at its finest, doesn't work for us. Right. Um, <laughs> dying? Losing your husband because he couldn't afford insulin because Big Pharma cares about profits more than people as capitalism at its finest does not work for us. And I Bernie think- Bernie has a hard time explaining how he's gonna pay for it though. So let's talk about how we'll pay for it because I think we need to um, talk about what policies. A tuition-free public college. 2.2 trillion over 10 years. So. Uh, so it's funny because um, policies are always, progressive policies are always talked about in 10 year price tags. Uh, conservative policies are always talked about in one year price tags. <laughs> and so our military budget increase went up by 70 to 80 billion dollars one year alone, about 100 billion um, you know, since Trump started, pretty much, or it's, about, it's been about a hundred billion increase since Trump uh, started. We don't ask how he pays for that. When we talk about big government, we don't talk about big government interjecting themselves into the bodies of women and gender nonconforming people for anti-choice policy. Um, so I'm happy to talk about the reduction of government's role in places that I think are harmful. But tell they're... them how to tell them how you. Tell them how this is getting paid for because sure. yeah, that's the so, that's what you want. Um, right. So <laughs> tuition-free public colleges yeah. that can be paid by a simple Wall Street trans transaction tax. Medicare for all. What you do is that you take your premium and some of your health care costs right now that you give to a Blue Cross Blue Shield and Aetna, whomever, and you lower that number. The average American family pays about ten thousand dollars in health care costs. Mm -hmm. You lower that number and you just it transitions over to a payroll tax, and the average American. Uh, <laughs> gets to save tons more money. There was a Yale study that just came out that said we could transition to Medicare for all and give two years severance to every person whose job may be risked in, uh, in the transition and still save money in our current health system. But keep, people want to keep their backup insurance plans. That was Elizabeth Warren's issue. Could, Where does Bernie stand on that? On their like their Medicare supplemental? Yeah, the supplemental. So, um, so Medicare for all. The what private. Private, also. private. People private private also, private. not just Medicare for all. So private. I mean, uh, supplemental. So I think that um, if we're talking about our normal health care plans, I think people like their doctors. I don't know if people love Blue Cross Blue Shield. Hmm. And I think that when we expand our health care system, when we lower the price of prescription drugs, when we guarantee health care as a right in the United States of America, just as every other developed country in the world does, we will be in a better place. Mm -hmm. um, um, Congresswoman, I, I don't think
think we're going to find a middle ground on this. Did you mind if we move on to the next sure. subject, which we might be able to find a little more middle ground on? So I want to talk about the Bernie bros. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that connects women on the left and women on the right, I have found at least a lot of guest hosts, a lot of guests that have come on over the three years I've been here, is the abuse that we have all been subjected to by Bernie bros. It is by far, of anything I've ever done in my entire life, the most violent, the most misogynistic, the most sexist, the most harmful. My mother has cried over doctored photos Bernie brothers have sent me, and I'm just mm -hmm. one story. He has a real problem, mm -hmm. and I don't think that he's doing enough to tamper it down. Mm -hmm. If it were anyone, I'd say this has no representative of me. It's disgusting. It's vitriolic, and every time I see him talk about it, he's like, doesn't represent me. Move on. Mm -hmm. You're a extremely powerful woman. How do you feel that he's attached to this deeply misogynistic, and I would go so far as to say violent, mm. sector of people? Yeah, you know, and I think um, internet culture can often be very toxic, and whether we are cognizant of it or not, it nearly always concentrates on women, people of color, mm. queer people. Definitely. Um, and we experience the brunt of it. And um, I think, you know, I, I think that to a certain extent, you know, we have to always reject hate, reject vitriol, um, and denounce that kind of behavior. Um, also, you know, we also know the amount of anonymous activity that happens on the internet, and that simply is difficult. It is difficult to control when you have like a, you know, a, a, a Twitter handle with a bunch of numbers on it with two followers that are lobbying vitriol at you, we don't know where that comes from, yeah. but I know that it doesn't come I think come he's done enough pain. to try and stop it? You know, I think he works very hard. I think we send out, so we send out um, messaging emails, and you know what, it's, I've been subject to a lot of this stuff from all sorts of the, all sorts of pockets of, from the internet. ICE and CBP officers um, targeted me on Facebook for attacks when I went yeah. to visit the border. Um, they photoshopped, you know, people who are supposed to be protecting immigrants and children, uh, photoshopped. He's got to do more. Horrendous. He's got, he's so. got to, he's got to, he's got to stand up and say it every day if he needs to. Yeah. Stop this. We're not accepting so, it. Sure. It's not good for us.